Hi, my name's Nick Woody here. I'm the Senior Fellow at the Trent Simulation and Clinical Skills Centre in Nottingham. I'm a medic by background with a big interest in patient safety, but also in human factors and ergonomics. And thank you for watching this podcast. Just a quick overview of a model that we've created ourselves and find very useful to describe human factors and ergonomics in the healthcare environment. So we created this model because there are a lot of models out there that describe human factors. Uh, Some are healthcare based, some come from other industries such as aviation. To me and a lot of my colleagues, a lot of them are difficult to understand and not particularly well contextualised to healthcare. So we created this model. It's been designed by healthcare staff for healthcare staff working on the front line to help them identify the human factors and ergonomic influences on their performance in their particular work system. When I teach about this, I always say that, first off, you are the individual at the centre of the work system in healthcare. You, on that particular day, have a number of intrinsic or personal factors that will be affecting your performance. How tired are you? How hungry are you? Have you had an argument with your partner? Has the dog just died? Whatever that may be. All of those things will be affecting your performance, potentially impeding your performance. Add on top of that a stressful day with difficult interactions and then your performance level potentially decreases, you reach your point of limitation earlier. As staff members, we interact with patients. Patients have a number of particular factors that influence our performance as well. Some patients are very easy to deal with. Some patients are much harder. So think about personality of patients, behaviour of patients. Uh, language barriers, cultural barriers or so. We can all think of patients that have been very easy to treat and we've enjoyed treating them. There's no doubt they get a better deal than those who we find very difficult to communicate with and to build a rapport with. As individual healthcare members, we work as part of a team. And of course, we know most issues and errors that happen in healthcare are related to failures in teamwork and communication. So the structure of that team, the dynamic of that team, the leadership, the maintenance of awareness of the full situation and the the being able to deal with conflicts and ensuring good communication within the team is important. This is a whole area of human factors known as non-technical skills. The individual and the team, they are usually undertaking a task. That task is undertaken in a particular environment. How that environment is designed and laid out, structured, will affect the performance of individuals. Is it easy to find things? Are things standardised? Is there enough light? Is there a low amount of noise that could cause distractions, etc.? We follow guidelines or paperwork, protocols. Um, Sometimes these are very difficult to find in the first place. And even when you do find them, are they easy to follow? That's the big question mark, isn't it? And therefore, that protocol has a potential to inhibit your performance. And of course, we work with equipment as well. We will all know some equipment that's very easy to use and that supports our performance. But of course, there are multiple different pieces of equipment in healthcare that are not standardised, complex and have not been designed with the user in mind, meaning that an error is more likely to occur. Think of syringe drives, fluid delivery devices, defibrillators, even the computers that we wheel around. All of this, of course, happens within an organisation. The culture of that organisation has a effect or an influence on the performance of people working on the front line, as well as an influence on the way the the environment is designed, the system is designed, the equipment is designed. So have a think about your organisational culture. How is that affecting your performance as an individual? And how is that affecting improvement and changes? Are people happy working where they are? Is there good well-being, good morale? And do people feel that they can easily raise concerns and speak up? And therefore, these things will be taken seriously and improvements made. And finally, of course, all of this happens within the state, the government. The government influences the way the NHS is run and therefore influences us on the front line. Just think of the newspapers at the moment, the constant beating of the NHS by the newspapers, the effect that that must have on morale and therefore on individuals working on the front line and therefore effects on their health and well-being, which will affect their performance. Overall, this model identifies all of those things that affects your performance in your particular work. And most of what I've talked about has been negative or inhibitory influences on your performance. But of course, any one of these as well can support resilience, can support you doing the right thing and making your life easier as well. It's about your performance, but it's also about your health and well-being.
and hopefully this model, if you use it, will be able to help you identify all of those factors in your workplace. To find out more information, by all means, drop us a email to the Trent Simulation and Clinical Skills Centre. More than happy to share our expertise related to human factors and ergonomics with you. Thanks for listening.